Why might the centrists, the center left and the center right, support Ukraine? Forever war. Forever war. Correct. Good answer. <laughs> the, the centrists like their forever wars because it funds the military industrial complex. They support democracy against authoritarianism. Um, <laughs> on the hard left, however, they're supporting Ukraine. It has more to do with an opposition towards Russia in terms of authoritarian cultural right-wingism. That you could also make the argument here is where you could f sort of fight for a, a Ukraine liberated from being a pawn of Western hegemony or whatever. When we get even further left, why are we supporting Russia over here? What's going on? Anything the West doesn't support. Any, and once you get here, you get to like Marxist-Leninism, tanky territory. And you hate NATO so much, you end up supporting Russia. On the hard right and on the far right, we have Russian support. What's going on here, Klaus? What do you think's going on here? Uh, it's like anti, anti-West, global, anti-globalist cabal. Right. From the Western perspective, it's kind of an international nationalism. It's like, let's let Russia govern themselves. Let's let them do their own thing. And let's get them out of the World Economic Forum and all these globalist plots to control the world. That's very right-wing coded. The, and the anti-globalism stuff. You could even make an argument that's like even a little libertarian quoted, right? However, on the really far right, wait, why are we letting them govern themselves, right? It's because they're based in their trad and they're ethno-nationalists. That's, that's the West's conception of Russia. And what's important to note is this isn't like the world support of Ukraine and Russia. This is like the average Westerner. This is, this is us, fellas. A new expansion pact just dropped recently with Israel-Palestine. We, we noticed that the center supports Israel. Why is that? Oh, forever war. Yeah, forever war. Yeah, that's it. Forever the forever war. war. They're doing consciously what these people are kind of doing unconsciously a little bit. No, it's because the right wingers are. Shush. Okay. Well, yeah, yeah. That that's also that's also it. So the the evangelical Christians support Israel against the Islam Islam because the Islam is scary, and they did the, they did a nine eleven that one time. I added some barbed wire over here because. The transition from being so right-wing that you support Palestine, you actually have to bridge sort of a logical gap of going from being a hard-right evangelical Christian or, you know, any person who's just on the new right or the hard-right in general to going to being like an actual neo-Nazi. Because these people hate Israel so much that they're supporting Palestine. Because they hate Jews. Yeah, it doesn't logically follow that... You get to a point where you love Israel so much that you wind up loving Palestine. That doesn't make any sense. On the hard left, we have we have pretty solid Palestinian support, and uh, you can you notice this leftists on Twitter. Um, the the Palestine marches are are much bigger on the left. Why might this be class hard left? Anti imperialism. Anti imperialism. Can you be pro Palestinian without being anti U S hegemony? I mean, that's the position of basically all Western countries is that they support the two-state solution. So is that like, is that anti-Israel? Is that pro-Palestine? With, with this, like, if you're over here, you're like still supporting Israel, but it's like not a, it's not a super strong support. Like over here is like kill all the Palestinian kind of area. When you're at this phase, it's like destroy Israel, basically. Where's like, where's like a 20 year old girl in a liberal arts class? She it's, doesn't really have an opinion on US hegemony. She, right. she just doesn't want those poor people to be oppressed. I think. I feel like the main, like the, the marchers and the students and the universities and stuff are all just on the Palestinian side. Like they're not, there's no sort of middle ground. They're all just pro-Palestine. Yeah, I agree. So uh, you say they're all here? They're all there. They've yeah, crossed the border out of the blue zone and into the green and black. Okay, but but just for the audience's sake, is JJ's a Zionist, so we can't trust him. I actually, I think I think the far left position and the, the hard left position here is pretty much in unison. That's why there's nothing more extreme. Like it doesn't yeah. go into Russia or what. It doesn't go back to Israel the way that the Ukraine thing goes back to Russia. But yeah. could it? Here's 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 the very far left case for that is that this, the racial spirit of the Jews is communist. And so the only way to get communism is that you must support the Jewish people as a race. That's actually, a, that's a, that's a Nazbol take. <laughs> a real thing. Oh, wow. All right, now, we're going to look at some examples of this in action um, by talking about some politicians who have real political power. And no, I'm just kidding. I'm going to pull a bunch of e-celeb crackers. I'm going to pull, pull up a bunch of crackers now. Look, let's, let's check out the crackers. Destiny... I, I would say he's pretty solidly on the center left. Supports Ukraine, supports Israel. Ethan Klein, I would say, is a little farther to the left. Uh, also a Jew. So has a little bit of uh, you know family in Israel. That's going to affect the opinions and stuff. On a podcast with Hassan called Leftovers. I don't know if you guys follow that at all, but they have a podcast together. 
from what I know about it, they had a falling out recently because Hassan is very pro Palestine, and Ethan's more kind of wishy washy middle. So this is this this kind of describes the break between the two of them. Is like Ethan's over here supports Ukraine, obviously. Um, but when it comes to the Palestine stuff, like, is he pro the destruction of the Israeli state? Eh, not quite. Hassan is pro destruction of the Israeli state. Um, and so, yeah, that's, that's kind of, that's kind of a, a very high level overview of what's going on, on the left. Any questions? Does he also support Russia? I, 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 I don't know if I would go so far as to say like he fully, like super, super supports Russia, but he definitely hates NATO. Right. And the... If, if we're trying to bin make, make everything a binary here, which this graph is trying to do, you're saying if you hate – if you really, really hate Ukraine, that kind of allies you with Russia. If you really, really hate NATO, that kind of allies you with Russia. Right wing uh, – I put Jordan Peterson over here. Jordan Peterson is someone who supports Russia. And by supports Russia, I mean like, again, skeptical of NATO but from the right. Anti-WEF, as we were talking about. Give him hell and then Yahoo. An old, a, a real banger. That's a good example of pro-Russia, pro-Israel. Nick Fuentes, far right. I don't know if you guys knew this. Doesn't like Jews very much. Yeah, so pro-Palestine. So the Russians say that the Ukrainians are all Nazis. Yes. It's interesting that there is no Nazi support for Ukraine. Even if you go to the extreme right, there becomes no point at which the... Oh, JJ, I'm really glad you asked. You, you said that because I'm going to show you my next chart now. If I had to guess, I would say this one, this chart was pretty clearly made by someone on the right, considering they added all their little autistic fixations. <laughs> <laughs> this sliver over here represents when Russia calls Ukraine Nazis... This position is like, yes, <laughs> the, the whatever 2%, the, the Azov battalion, the Ukrainian population that votes for the Nazi party in Ukraine. This is the support of that. It's like Ukrainian nationalism, fascism. And then you go even further, right? This is a part of history where the Nazis occupied Ukraine. And this was just neo-Nazi Ukraine, like fully neo-Nazi Ukraine. Okay, who's advocating that? No one really. <laughs> Small. This is all nonsense. I mean, I mean, this is arguably all nonsense, but this is like definitely nonsense. Okay, are people on poll again. Yes. Going farther to the left, though, we have support of Russia, and then they just threw the Soviet Union in there. There's this idea that oh, from people who aren't very, I guess, politically literate, Putin is literally trying to bring back the Soviet Union, right? He's not. He just wants an empire. Uh, it, and the Soviet Union was when Russia was strong and had a big empire. He's not going literally for communism, but this is like, oh, he's going literally for communism. W what's this? This is, I think, like a crusader. Yeah, this is the crusader. This is a crusader state. Yeah, the Roman Empire. So over here, we're basically saying the Middle East should be run by the Christians, which is to say, like, the Jews and the Arabs are fighting, and then the Christians come in with, like, a chair out of nowhere, and they just slam it over both of their heads and take over. Um... Is anyone actually advocating for this? I think I think so. No, because all the Christians support. Wait, wait, hold. On. Who, who? Why do you think that? I yeah, I think there's people on the internet totally have had that thought. That's in the zeitgeist. <laughs> Rogan's had that. It's in the zeitgeist. It doesn't make sense. Art Chad says it's in the zeitgeist. It's in the zeitgeist. Silence, old man. I mean, it clicks. You know, the Christian. Look, look, the youth love it. The youth love it, JJ. This make well, I, I feel like the the Roman Empire thing is also. The, they're the reason why they, the Israelis left Israel in the first place, right? right? So that they just want to return to that. <laughs> so drive the Jews drive back them into back. exile. Yeah. And then there's nothing more so, extreme on that side. So, the, I think that you just gave up over here. Because again, I really think this was made by a right winger. If I, will, if I want to be generous to the, the chart maker here, I would say this is black because it's just like anarchy. Like there is no state anymore. There's no Palestinian state. There's no Israeli state. This is like an anarchist take. This is like a left anarchist take where everyone just lives in harmony. Um, so there is no no border. I don't know if that's what, the, what we're going for. We're interpreting great art here. <laughs> All right, well, let's show you one more. Graph. Now, really, unless you're China, you're on the side of Taiwan. I mean, again, again, if you're a Westerner, you're probably not intuitively invested in China winning, unless you're on the very far left and you believe China is communist. Uh, if you believe China is actually socialist, or if it's not socialist right now, that it's moving towards socialism. There's, again, fierce debates on the left about this because, you know, left anarchists say that China is just state capitalism. That's, it's, it's, that's still bad. But 
if you believe that China is actually a method of getting to socialism or communism, then yeah, you would support China. But you would also have people that would support it in the same way that people on the far left support Russia because they're anti-American and they see Taiwan as an American puppet state and all that. Yeah. Right, and ta- yeah, and tankies often say that Taiwan's nationalist, the Nationalist Party should be, you know, the communists should come yeah. drive them out. Well, and then that, so that brings us to like support from Taiwan over here. If you go even further right, then yeah, you, you are kind of like a might makes right. China should just take over because I'm pro empire and I'm pro vicious conquering. And the, yeah, they are pretty nationalist. Yeah. Right. And the person here circled their own beliefs. They're clearly a social democrat on the center left, moderate left. Nice. Very good. That's not, that's not a social democrat. That's just like the mainstream position of the entire world. That you support Ukraine, you support a two-state solution, and you support Taiwan. It seems like the extremists on both sides tend to support the enemy of the West. What do you make of that, J.J. McCullough? Well, I think it shows that political extremism is always defined by a certain degree of self-loathing. And this is obviously reflects a kind of broadly American perspective. So anti-Americans can be found on the far left and the far right. And I think uh, if, everyone's, if, if, everyone, if everyone's saying it, it must be true. Who's everyone? Everyone on the everyone in my head. They're all saying it. If the far, if I say, I think if both extremes are saying something that the center's not saying, the extremes are probably right. If they're saying that in my head. It'd be a terrifying world in which Hamas and Russia emerge victorious. It'd be terrifying for like five minutes, and then kumbaya, my lord. <laughs> More videos to watch. Well, that's that's all the charts I got for today. What do you What do you guys? Any questions? Any thoughts? Comments? Prayers? Make the case for far left pro Israel. Okay. Um, without doing the racial spirit of the Jews? Yeah. Yeah. <sighs> that was the only thing I had. Okay. Um, there are. Israel was founded by socialists. So the, the first Zionists were leftists. Right? Yeah. So. There is, and there's leftist movements within Israel. There's even communist movements within Israel. And so. If you think that that is like. That has a potential of, of spreading, then maybe the state of Israel is the way to do it. Yeah, if there wasn't so much sort of loathing for Israel as a kind of symbol of American hegemony and stuff, like if, in a in a sane world, you could imagine people on the far left liking Israeli socialism and democracy more than sort of the fundamental right wing religious fascism of Hamas. Yeah. But it's only because we live in a twisted world where somehow that is a more natural ally of the left. Dark and twisted world we live in. <laughs> Why is the racial spirit of the Jews communist? That's just fun. That's, like that, that, that's, the only, that's the only way to like, make a Nazbol case for Israel, like a far right and a far left case at the same time, is you're doing race realism by talking about the racial spirit of the Jews, but then going on to the left and saying, and it's communist. So we like them. Yeah, but it's a okay. crazy stretch. Though. It is a crazy stretch. No one actually has that opinion. I made it, I made it up in my own head, and I like it. It's like they're hyper-capitalists, but they want to spread communism everywhere else. But that's, I mean, but that's, like but that's the nature of anti-Semitism, right? Yeah. Like, that's what Hitler said. He said that the Jews are somehow both horrible capitalists and horrible communists yeah, at exactly. the same time. Yeah. So Greg is saying that there's... And that's a good thing. <laughs> so you could, have, you could believe that and then just decide to take the leftist well, so, side of it or yes, okay, it, yeah, so like, well, help they give me communism. This is a good point. This is a, this is a broader point with, with everything we've been talking about is some of these positions are based off of the characterizations of their enemy. So when we talk about like the far left of Russia, the idea of building a Soviet Union again that's not like what's actually happening, but that's how it's perceived as being happening by some people. And so when we say that's actually what they should be doing, that's how we get to that kind of position. And with, with geopolitical conflicts, there's a lot of information being passed back and forth, misinformation, propaganda, disinformation. And it's kind of like a Rorschach test. Like people are seeing whatever they want to see and applying their own beliefs to it. This is all ideological. And when it comes to actually like voting, I mean, if, if you're voting in America, it's Republican versus Democrat. If you vote for the Republicans or the Democrats, you're probably, you know, somewhere, somewhere in here. Like, what's interesting is that if you're an extreme, there is no party that reflects a pro-Russian, pro-Palestinian position. Yeah. And there's no party that represents a, yeah, uh, you know, from either the right or the left. Like, there's even the most extreme left-wing Republican, or sorry, most extreme right-wing Republican does not support Palestine. And even the most extreme left-wing Democrat 
does not support Russia. So ultimately, you would have to choose which one of those two foreign policy issues matters more to you. So it's like the the far left ultimately cares more about Palestine than Russia. The far right in America cares more about Russia. Let's unpack that. So there's no way of supporting Palestine with a vote. In the right way. Right, because our government has been, anyone want to say it? Zogged. Zogged. Don't say that. (laughs) Theoretically, there are far left Democrats but they support Palestine, and that's sort of where their far-left foreign policy views express themselves. There is no far-left Democrat that also supports Russia. Right, none of the squad right. supports. Maybe if, if Hassan ran for Congress, he could run on that platform. <laughs> but that that is a more plausible platform, being pro-Russia, pro-Palestine on the far left, than I think a pro-Russia, pro-Palestine. Like, Palestine is so marginal in terms of its support on the far right. Do you, hear to hear, you heard it here first, folks. If you want to support the enemies of the West, be a far leftist. I think that's true. So be a far leftist. That's the, that's the conclusion. conclusion. I, I'm glad we figured that out. JJ supports the far left. Definitely on the left now. 